Yeah. So object two is our target, and initially it wasn't moving. It was just hanging here waiting to be hit. So that's right. Well, that's going to make our life a lot easier. Good. So what's the answer to the question? So the, velocity, the final velocity of the target is root 200 over 3 meters per second. OK. And what does that mean about what's, what's happening? Like, does that mean that when, I guess that just doesn't, isn't what I expected. I don't know why, but I expect them to like split there. Right. Well, this would make more sense if we also figure out what's going to happen to the rubber ball after right. the collision. Okay. So let's also figure out what's going to happen to the rubber ball after the collision. Let's okay. work that out, even though the problem didn't ask us for that. Okay, so then I could use simpler. Which equation are you using here? This one up here? This one. Twitter. Okay. But now, the energy is conserved. Now, we could go back to conservation of energy and momentum, but remember our shortcut is just to use our cookbook formulas here. So let's just see what this formula would tell us. So I'll put this formula on the board. So here we have the formula V1 final equals M1 minus M2 over M1 plus M2. V1 initial plus 2 M2 M1 plus M2. M1 minus M2, M1 plus M2, V1 initial, 2, M2, M1 plus M2, V2 initial. Okay, good. That's right. The, uh, so we don't want to plug in the root 200 over 3 here. That's the final. The initial uh, velocity of the target was 0. So what's the speed of the rubber ball after it hits the target? 0 meters per second. Yeah. Now keep in mind, these are all horizontal. We've been focusing on conservation of horizontal momentum. So this means that after it hits the target, it's going to come to a horizontal stop. And then it's not just going to float there in the air. It's just going to plunge down, down to the ground. Uh -huh. So. Basically, the ball is going to go like this. It's going to go pretty much horizontally until it hits the target. Uh, it'll, it'll, be, it'll be sinking a little bit, but we're kind of ignoring that. Mm -hmm. But then when it hits the target, it's going to lose all of its horizontal velocity and then just fall straight down to the ground. And all the horizontal velocity will be transferred to here. Now, remember what we were using here. We were using these two cookbook formulas, which are what you get when you do the algebra for conservation of energy equation and conservation of momentum equation. Okay. Well, we can see now that, so notice, um, you might just want to memorize, um, in an elastic collision between two equal masses, what happens? In an elastic collision between two equal masses, the first mass comes to a halt and completely transfers its speed to the other mass. So energy is like completely transferred. The other. Say again? So it's like a complete transfer. That's right. Energy. It's a complete transfer of both its momentum and its speed and its energy. That occurs for an elastic collision between two equal masses. If the masses hadn't been equal, things wouldn't have worked out like that. 
you can see that because the masses were equal, this term was zero and this term was zero. Um, so that's why these formulas simplify. So when two equal masses go through a elastic collision, um, they kind of just switch places. Mass one comes to a complete halt, and mass two simply takes on the velocity of the old one. You can see that that will conserve the energy and the momentum. Have we conserved the energy and the momentum? Well, before we had um, a three kilogram mud ball that was going at root 200 over three. Uh, and now we have a three kilogram target that's going at root 200 over three. So the energy and the momentum have been conserved. Mm -hmm. uh, so this, this has to really be, this uh, has to be the answer because that's the way that we can conserve this energy. So the instructor actually would probably like it if you just had memorized that when two equal masses hit each other, um, you just, uh, one comes to a halt and the other one goes with the same speed, but you can prove that using these, using these equations. Now where do those equations come from? Well, we use conservation of momentum, M1, V1 initial plus M2, V2 initial equals M1, V1 final plus M2, V2 final. That's conservation of momentum and conservation of energy. One half M1, V1 initial squared plus one half M2, V2 initial squared equals one half M1, V1 final squared plus one half M2, V2 final squared. Conservation of momentum and conservation of energy. These shouldn't be equations we have to look up. These are just common sense for when we're conserving energy and momentum. And we saw from your cheat sheet, you might as well cancel out all the one halves here because they're all equal, so we can drop the one halves. So this equation and this equation are simply what you get if you solve this, these two systems of equations for V1 final and V2 final. In fact, it would be a good homework exercise, good algebra practice to try to solve this, two, this system of equations to get this and this. However, that would be a lot of work to go through on the test. So on the test, they just give you these cookbook shortcuts. These equa equations embody all the information in here, but they're much easier to use. Uh, so for purposes of uh, attacking this question, I think all you have to say is, so the key thing though is, when can you use these? Only for elastic collisions. So we could not have used these for the previous parts about the mud ball, because those were not elastic. How did we know they're not elastic? Well, first of all, you can't assume something's elastic unless there's a good reason. Here we had a good reason to suppose they were elastic because the ball was rubber. Yeah. But even more than that, um, nothing, anytime the objects stick together, it can't be elastic. Even if they're only partially sticking together, it can't be elastic. So these equations are only for elastic collisions. But that's okay, because for when they're sticking together, we have something else that helps us. When they're sticking together, we have the fact that there's only one object after the collision. Yeah. So for an elastic collision, we have extra help from these two cookbook equations that come from conservation of energy. And when the objects stick together, we have extra help from the fact that there's only one object after the collision. And um, just to, to go back to the, the common sense of this, when two equal masses hit each other in an elastic collision, one comes to a halt and the other one moves on, just think about a, a billiard ball table. Um, if you smack one billiard ball straight into another billiard ball, that actually is what would happen, right? The first billiard ball would just come to a halt and the other one would move. In fact, well, and, and that doesn't always happen when two balls hit on the on a billiard ball table, but that oftentimes happens, right? You'll oftentimes see the first ball just pretty much come to a halt and the other one move off from it. So it's not that weird to see one object come to a halt and completely transfer its velocity to another object, which is what we have happening here. All right, well, these are two equations that are on the cheat sheet, but most students don't need to use them. So that's the big thing we learned here. For an elastic collision, you can use these two shortcuts. But again, you don't use those unless you know that it's elastic. Yeah. So you would never use them when the objects are sticking together. But even if the objects aren't sticking together, you still can't use these equations unless there's a reason to think the collision is elastic. And here the reason was that the ball was rubber. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's a very typical type of problem, so that would be a good one to, to try again. These videos are offered on a pay-what-you-like basis. You can pay for the use of the videos at my website. There's a link to my website in the info box. The address is www.freelance-teacher.com slash videos.htm or you can just use the link in the info box. Thank you.